from Joe Marco. Joe, uh, up, on to you. Oh, great. Uh, thank you. It's uh, glad to have this opportunity to uh, get information out to uh, the public on a couple of new products that we have. I'm here uh, with Billy Glavin, who's our uh, Director of Business Development. Uh, we get to be in front of his really nice uh, M1 Pro Car, which is uh, one of very few around. So we figured it's a nice setting uh, for racing people. Uh, we've got two cameras here. I, I, uh, so hopefully we can uh, show and talk and do different things. First product that we're going to introduce, and our topic is products we're bringing in from Europe, is our new Schubert SF1 carbon uh, helmet. And basically, this is the, the official unveiling. Uh, so it comes in a really nice uh, bag here. Uh, it is a carbon helmet that's an SA2020 and a FIA 8859 helmet. It's made of a T700 carbon. Uh, and you can see the, the quality of the carbon is laid in a, in a horizontal direction, which is really kind of cool. Uh, and as the helmet comes, it comes with uh, this really kind of a cool tinted visor. You would think that it's, a, it's not really colored. It's really a clear visor with a very, very, very slight reddish tint that just kind of takes that edge off the sun, but it's good for uh, all day, all night, uh, as much as you want to drive it. Uh, it's made in an autoclave and it's made in the same factory and the same workers that make all of our, our F1 helmets. Uh, and we, you know, that's kind of where Schubert's had its start and really we're pretty much it's been limited. This is the first time they've developed uh, anything other than the 8860 or the top of the model helmet. Uh, now, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the weight. So overall, it's about three pounds in, in average size. Uh, it comes in sizes 53, 54, 57, 59. Uh, then there's, that's in the smaller shell and the larger shell, it comes in a, in a 60, 61, then a 62 and a 63. So there's two different shells that go. Uh, inside the helmet, it has an option uh, inside for your ears, either ear cups, or comfort cushions. Uh, and it will come with both of them uh, in, the, in the helmet. Uh, so both, you'll be able to put whichever one you, you prefer to have. Uh, the ear cup will dramatically cut down on the noise uh, that you're gonna hear into it. And the ear cups can have built-in uh, electronic, integrated electronics with the ear cups. Uh, ventilation in the helmet is, is quite impressive. Uh, it's all developed uh, in a wind tunnel, which uh, Schubert has their own wind tunnel. Uh, you've got six holes at the top here uh, for air coming in and we can put a top air system on it uh, for whatever kind of racing we even have for NASCAR we have a, a top air which goes through the sixth and then it comes around the front and gives air into the front of the helmet here uh, so there's a lot of different ways the front it gives you quite a bit of ventilation uh, we tried it some on a go-kart track and the, the air the way the EPS is built inside the helmet there's channeling in the EPS and the way that the uh, crown pad is built uh, the crown pad actually has a stiffer foam on the side that goes against the helmet. And what that stiffer foam does is it prevents when you put your head in it to block off those channels. So you always get an incredible amount of airflow. Uh, even we found uh, on a sedan uh, out at BIR a couple of weeks ago, we were still getting air into the top of the helmet uh, that you could feel even through the head sock, even when you're inside a car, as long as the windows were open. Uh, the back of the helmet has six uh, ventilation places to, to let that uh, the heat uh, come out. Uh, so it's a really great. The visor, aside from it being looking cool and having a great tint to it, it comes standard with a inner insert, which is called a pin lock. Okay, and what that does is it's an anti-fog. Rather than having a coating or an anti-fog treatment, it actually is a complete extra lens that goes inside where there's a pocket of air uh, in between the, the outer and the inner lens and that will protect it from getting uh, fogged up. So it's an optimum performance for, for anti-fog. Uh, and what you get, it comes off what I call it's also with tear-off posts. And then you'll notice that the lock, the visor lock, if I press it down once, now I'm still gonna get air underneath here, but I've got a solid lock. And then if I press it down again, then I got a firm lock. We'll keep all the air, all the dust out. We designed it in such a way that if you're doing like uh, off-road racing, uh, dirt track uh, type stuff uh, where you get dust and dirt. It'll, the visor seal is an absolutely perfect visor seal. So you're not gonna get any intrusion of dust and dirt, uh, you know, especially like Baja type situations and, and, and situations like that. If you are in that kind of environment, we have the ability, we have inserts in here that can be replaced uh, with, the, with the mesh, which provides airflow, which can be solid 
uh, solid aluminum pieces that will replace it. Uh, so it's, it's really you know, optimally set up uh, for that. Now the integrated uh, electronics, okay, if we show, we've got a kit laying out here, you can see the kit that you're looking at on the, uh, on the left there, you can see the two ear cups. We have that either with a boom mic or inside the helmet, we actually can do an integrated mic. And you can see in the front there, so there's an integrated mic which has adjustable to go up and down and it can go in and out. Uh, all electronics are, are designed, uh, there have been channels created within the EPS so that the electronics are totally hidden behind the EPS and protected. Uh, all the electronics are, are made uh, actually in uh, our facility at HMS for worldwide uh, installation. Uh, the ear cups have the special cutouts to locate the microphones or the, the speakers. So you've got excellent sound uh, for within the ear cups. The fitment is very comfortable. It's easy to get the helmet on and off, whether you use the ear cups or the optional uh, comfort cushions. Uh, when you have the electronics in the helmet, it will have a cable coming down with either uh, the default will be an IMSA type connector on the cable. And if you look on the side of the helmet there, you can see uh, for the ear, for an earbud, we have a unique clip, okay? That clip is designed so that there's no holes or anything drilled into the helmet. It just solidly clips into the back, has secure in the back, and then it, it keeps the earbud connection parallel with the outside of the helmet. So there's nothing that could get caught on the helmet uh, relative to a net or anything that has to do with a net. So really a lot of tension to, to all of the details on everything that we've done. Uh, the helmet is, uh, for, uh, is 1949. Uh, that's a MAP price, and that's pretty much what it will be held to. Uh, ear truck, ear, uh, the electronics are optional, so you can have electronics with ear cups, uh, with an integrated mic, electronics with an ear cup, or with a boom mic. Uh, or you can have uh, we have MRTC if you're in Europe and you're racing IMSA and you need to have the, the additional uh, sensors in there to be able to tell which driver and the car number. All that stuff is, 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 all, is readily available in, in all different kits that, that come with the helmet. So we were really proud. Uh, we've uh, gotten about 25 helmets uh, that came in a, a couple of weeks ago, our very first ones. And there we actually, we kept three for ourselves, and the rest of those are sold. And uh, we have a shipment of uh, several hundred coming in on the third or fourth week uh, of January. And we have already dealers signed up. A couple of dealers put in some very large orders. Uh, and all the sizes that, that I mentioned will be, will be available. So we're hugely, uh, we're, we're excited. We've been working for a couple of years to get, uh, to get you know, this uh, on, ready and ready to go for the market. And uh, we, we, we worried about the details on every bit of quality and we're pretty impressed with uh, where we're gonna be. I don't know if you had any questions on that. I, I, I am right now. I'm, I'm kind of like speechless. I'm sitting there thinking about, you know, all the drivers I've ever worked with and how they would respond to something like this. I mean, the wow factor would be off the chart because it, you've addressed so many different issues that drivers will come, you know, in the process of getting ready for a new season in particular. And it, it looks like they have checked every box that I can see. I don't know what more you could do. That may have been... And I hate to say this about there's so many great helmets out there. It could wind up being almost the most perfect helmet ever. Uh, and, and guys, y'all work in an industry, but, and maybe I'm getting too off the chart here with no, my assessment, yeah, but that's uh, what I'm seeing. Everybody who's tried it on has been, uh, we have not yet found a person that's tried it on where it didn't really fit quite well. It's fairly tight uh, going on. And, uh, and the way that the foam has been designed, a lot of detail is that. So a lot of helmets, when you put on a helmet, uh, the foam, it, your cheeks are really, really, really pinched, okay? Mm -hmm. And you needed to do that because of the, the foam to keep it tight. But what, what they've designed is that the cheek pad actually has a more rigid foam around the outside that fits along the jawbone, and it's a little bit softer on the inside. So you don't, you're not, you still got the solid secure fit uh, that you need through the, uh, you know, to the, with the EPS and with the, with the, the, per, the lock the helmet on the head, but you're not having to bite your cheeks quite as much. And all of the, the crown pads and the cheek pads are all uh, totally interchangeable. So if you need a little bit more room in the cheeks or a little bit less room in the cheeks, we're all good to go with that. Well, so I've already got a question, got a question yeah. right here. And I think you've kind of addressed it, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Michael uh, Osen would like to know, 
do you have special applications, you know, for rally, motocross, drag racing, and drifters? I mean, is, or so, is it one, uh, in the, as one far product? as the, the drag racing goes, we have the ability to close off all of the, in certain classes in drag racing, you need to make sure that you've got the seals and everything is absolutely closed off. So mm -hmm. we do have inserts that will go in here uh, in, in the top that you can, you can replace all these with solid uh, pieces so that you get no air, uh, air or anything else coming in, uh, into, into the helmet. Um, and then, uh, as far as the seal, uh, there, I know that for like top fuel, they need a, a special a seal there. We haven't done that yet, but it's something that we uh, clearly could do, uh, or would be willing to do, if, you know, somebody was looking for it in that standard. Uh, we do also have our 8860 helmets, uh, which are primarily, uh, formula one style helmets. So it's like an 8860 APB. It's only available in uh, very in limited sizes and uh, it's, a, it's about $5,600, $5,700. But it's really, that's more of a, you know, the, the way Schubert has always been in the past before this has been not a generic off the shelf product, but one that's absolutely custom fit for everything. We can do a lot of fine tuning in this helmet off the shelf and your dealer. And we're hoping if any of you out there are dealers, uh, we are signing up dealers right now. Uh, as I said, we've got uh, three dealers that have already placed some fairly significant orders. Uh, but we are open for dealers. We have very excellent margins for dealers. Uh, and we have a full range of, of air spoilers and, and different pieces that we can use, uh, you know, for top airs, for uh, a spoiler that comes off the traditional one off the back for type karting. So for pretty much any kind of motorsport, uh, we've got it. Uh, we've got a couple of Formula Drift drivers. Uh, Ryan Turk's going to be the first guy uh, with it in, in Formula Drift. Uh, so, you know, I think it's going to take off. We have a Sun Peak uh, that you can, which is very popular with certain uh, types of racing. So, yes, we're addressing pretty much every type of racing that's out there. All right. I want to bring Billy in here because I know he's standing over right now. feels like, you know, hey, nobody wants to talk to me. Oh, he's Billy, on the next get... part. He gets the whole next part. <laughs> oh, he gets to do the whole next part? Okay. Yep. Well, I want to make sure you get in here. Uh, I've got some uh, follow-up questions on the helmet, but I want to get Billy, you know, talking about what he's, what he's got new for us. Yeah, so what we've got now is a race sense, and yep. uh, I'll let uh, Billy. Uh, this is a product I'm uh, very excited about. This came out of the UK uh, just a month or two ago. That's a race sense tire gauge. It does uh, both your pressures and your temperatures all in one gauge. It's a really nice unit, uh, very nice case. The biggest thing that I like out of this unit is it takes away a lot of paperwork. Uh, most of us who have done racing professionally know that when a car comes in off the track, you have one guy taking pressures, one guy taking temps. They all write it down on a piece of paper, hand it up to the crew chief, hand it up to the lead engineer. At the end of a session, you end up with stacks of these tire notes. This gauge takes care of all of that. So you turn it on. You can use it as a single gauge. I'll come over here and show the, the camera over here. You can use it as a single gauge to just set your pressures before you go on track. So it just becomes a regular standard gauge. But the really nice feature is when you turn it over, to the four tire mode, which is showing right now on the screen here, if you can see that. So what that does is it will tell you which corner to start. So if you're your tire guy, you don't have to think and remember which corner to start on. This is now telling the tire guy to start on the right front. That's what we have this particular setup for. In the setup mode, you can change it to start on any corner. So depending on where you're racing, uh, obviously for circle track racing, you're gonna probably go right front, right rear, left rear, left front. For road course racing, you might go the different direction, but all that is changeable in the settings. Um, what this now does is it will walk you through the car. So as a tire guy, car comes in, I go to take my pressure. I don't have to hit any buttons. I just put it on the tire and it's now showing me I'm at 16.4 PSI and I take it off and it's now logged that data. Now it is telling the tire guy to go ahead and take your temperatures at this particular corner. This is how we have it set up. So it's asking me for my outer temp first. I hit that, I hit one button to record it once the, tape, the temperature stabilizes. Then I move to my middle and then I move to my outer. And now it moves me to the next corner. You can see where it goes to the right rear. So it would walk the tire guy around the car. We have it set to go P's and T's is what we call it. So pressures and temps at each corner. You can set it to go pressure first and then come around and do temps or temperatures first and then come around and do pressures or temperatures only. Uh, the gauge is actually smart enough to know when the probe is plugged in. So if you don't want temperatures on a particular run, you just don't unplug, you just unplug the probe. And now it won't ask for temperatures. If I go to take a pressure again, 
it will just move on to the next tire and it won't ask me for the temperature. So I don't have to hit any buttons to skip over taking temperatures. All I did was unplug the probe. From here, this is where the device really gets very handy for racers. There is a way on the front of it, an NFC uh, connection for me to download the data I just recorded onto a smartphone, like an iPhone or an Android. That data then gets logged with the GPS location of where I took it, the time, the temperature at that location, and stored both in the device as well as my phone. And at the end of an event, I can take that data and export it to an Excel sheet, which you can see up on the laptop here. So this Excel sheet has all my runs from that particular day, categorized by time, location, date, my right front max pressure, my right front end pressure. So this gauge also is smart enough to record your bleed down. So when you come in off of the track and you wanna bleed it down, so I'm at 16.3, say I, my engineer says, all right, bring it down a pound. When I bleed it down, to half a pound, let's say, and I take it off, it's now recorded in the data set that bleed off. And so you have that recorded for posterity so that you can set your next set of tires at the starting temperature already accounting for how much your build was. So that's all accounted for in the data. Then if you come back to the data set and keep scrolling over to the right, it has your all your temperatures, the outer, inner, or outer, middle, inner, all the way across all four tires. And then at the very end of the, the document, it has the ambient air temperature, the ambient air pressure, the car number, any notes that your tire guy might have added, the weather at the, at the time of the reading, the wind direction, and the wind speed. All of that is logged in a sortable CSV file from Excel and it will hold up to 100 outings. So you could do a whole race weekend and not even have to download the data, or you can do it after every run. You could do it after, you know, once at lunchtime, once in the evening. And now you have, without any paperwork, without any written down notes, you have all your tire data stored on a sortable CSV file that you can have a running log for your entire race season of where your pressure started, where they ended, your temperatures, all sorted by geographical location, by track, by time, by day. It's really a, a huge advance in tire management and tire data keeping. And it effectively eliminates two guys having to do tires in three different hand notes getting passed around to the lead engineers. It's, uh, I've been very impressed with it. I've used it since uh, Petit Le Mans with IMSA all the way up until now for testing. Um, and it's been very effective. Some of the other features that this device has is you can have up to seven different pages. So this is on page two, and each page has its own ability to have a different setup. So you could set it up so that each page is a set of tires. So say you're a late model guy and you have five sets of tires in a given weekend, you could set each page to record a different set of tires. Or if you're like me and you run five different cars in a weekend for a vintage event, I can have a page per car with their number distinguishing which page that car is on. So car number three is on page one, car number 99 is on page two. And now anytime my tire guy takes a reading from any of those cars, as long as he does it on that car's page, it's now sorted by car number. So when I go back and look at it at the end of the weekend, all my data is stored by my car, by car number. So I don't have to have separate gauges for each car. I can do everything with one gauge. Now, alternatively, that's being uh, increased to be 12 to 16 for a NASCAR type setup. For rather than you, you using it for different cars, you can use it for different sets of tires. So we've had a couple of the NASCAR teams that have tried it, uh, and uh, we we we're at seven now. We're, we were going up to 12, but we're actually going to go up to 16, which is uh, for Atlanta. For example, Atlanta next year is the maximum number of sets of tires between mm -hmm. practice and uh, running that they'll have. So. So uh, Race Sense is out of the UK uh, and they are extremely, it's a small company, but it's a very technically oriented company. They build all the stuff right at their facility and they're very adaptable to uh, in, improvements as we've been going along. So it's a really outstanding product from that standpoint. Well, the other thing real quick here, uh, when you're making the program, does it allow you to take and put the spring rate as well as the tire codes and roll out and everything? Does that have a category for that? It doesn't have a category for that, but it does have, so if you go into the setup menu, yep. you can see, you can set your car number, your units, so you can do it in PSI or bar. 
Um, you can do it in what uh, degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, day, month, year. You can do your order of tire P's and T's. You can do gauge mode. You can set your corner, which one you start on. You can set the direction in which you go. You can set the offset pressure. So if you have, again, for a tire guy, the engineer can come in here and set what his ideal hot temperature uh, pressure is. And then you can have the tire guy just have the offset. So the tire guy doesn't need to know what pressure we're shooting for. He just needs to know how far off he is. So the gauge will tell him plus a pound or minus a pound. So when he's setting the tires up after a run, he just bleeds it down to zero or adds air to put, get to zero. And now the tires are set to what your engineer wants, which is what we end up using because our engineer will give us the tire pressures. And then my tire guy doesn't have to have a note selling him what, what pressures you're shooting for. And that's all changeable on the screen. And because you're okay. going to see how hard is it to file, set up? Give you the ability to add fields to the CSV file for that information. Uh -huh. And I'm sorry, how, what was your question? How hard is the program to set up? You know, it's all done right here on the gauge. So okay. let's say I wanted to change my left front tire pressure to, um, you know, let's say I want to go up to, I don't know or down to 29 pounds, you just hit that and just move on. Wait for it to stop flashing. And then now you're ready to move to the next tire. And you get to do, you can do this for all seven pages. So we do this, this is a pre-event checklist that we do. We have it set for all of our cars. We know what our heart, our uh, target pressures are. And that way when my tire guy gets to the track, everything's already done. And all he does is change the page to the car number that he's reading that's coming off the track. And we have the data logged for the rest of the weekend. No, no paper notes, no handoff notes. And then my engineer, whenever he wants to look at the data, like at lunchtime, he just comes over, grabs the gauge and puts his phone against it and exports the file off uh, via his phone. So that, that would work on a phone or a, a, like an iPad? Or yeah, kind yep. of and then you can, if you don't want to do it through a, via a phone, you can also hook it directly to a computer with yep. a USB cord. Um, okay. So if you don't want to deal with that handoff, you can still use it directly to a computer. This is also how it charges. So it's got a lithium ion battery inside of it that charges it. That's good for 24 hours of continuous use and 30 days of standby use. And the, the idea of using the phone, the phone is what will give you automatically all the weather data and the environmental data. So that's, it's kind of important if you want to factor that in in a major way to, mm -hmm. to do the, you know, just stick it with your phone and let the phone then dump it to uh, the CSV file on a computer. So you, you got the uh, air pressure gauge that came out of the UK. And again, I've had a couple of people here that are curious about that the Schubert stuff, helmet and everything. It's still coming out of Germany, right? Yeah, well, so actually all of the Schubert uh, motorsport helmets are made by uh, their wholly owned uh, division called Teca 25 in Italy. Uh, okay. So the, the, uh, the carbon shop where everything is made and all, where all, all the components are made, uh, is, is done actually in Italy. And they are the ones that have been historically making uh, all of the, the shells from the, uh, the Formula One helmets and are, you know, it's a small shop. There are about six people there uh, that are, you know, do all the assembly. It's exactly the same people uh, doing, doing the assembly there. So would, would, would it be a appropriate question here? I know Henry Roberts said, you know, he thought that Schubert only made helmets for Formula One and top professional motorsports. But it looks like they're branching out and, and touching on a lot more. Uh, well, so this is basically the first step. It's only a carbon helmet. We don't have a composite helmet yet. Um, we may uh, work towards um, a, a lower, uh, the not the 8860 a, 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 a ABP, which is the, you know, with the integrated design on, but the, the one just below that, we may come out with something like that uh, early, uh, early next year. But, right. uh, you know, so we're taking our time. We want to do it right. That's the main thing is we need to make sure that whatever we do, that it's as perfect as it possibly can be. And we put a lot of time and effort over the last year and a half in getting this, you know, right. And obviously it makes sense to do it with the new uh, Schnell standard at the same time. So we didn't want to try to develop something for the old standard and then have to go and switch it. So we kind of timed everything to be at this. And we've you know, we, we've had a lot of experience in, in working with another helmet that, that prior to this. And so we had a lot, we learned quite a bit over six or seven years. And we basically tried to take that knowledge and work with Schubert very closely uh, to get this to happen. So both the SF1 Pro and the Race Sense are products that are dealer 
oriented. So we, we want to get them to dealers where you can go into a shop, you can try on the helmet, which is always the best way, and you can pick up your race sense at a local dealer. Of course, they're also available at HMS. Uh, but if you're looking for new products and you're a dealer, give us a call. Well, I'll tell you what, that's what they need to do. I see Francis is here. Uh, we got to kind of wrap this thing up. Guys, thank you very much. A very informative, and we've got two great products right now that are being introduced now by HMS, and you guys done an outstanding job. A lot of a lot of moving around. We got a chance to see everything from, from A to Z that you got at least in front of you, and I'm sure that these are going to be uh, widely used by the start of at least uh, of race season. Now, it looks like in not only NASCAR, but probably uh, around the country, it looks like, from drifters or anybody else. So, uh, you certainly hope so. <laughs> yep. Joe, great. Joe, I mean, congratulations on the productions. You guys you know, deserve like a, a round of applause. I mean, a beautiful job, beautiful job. What a, what a, what a show. Uh, I would like to say a big thank you to Joe. Joe is an expert in safety. Uh, Joe participated in two of the ePortrait uh, Live Tech Webinar series back, uh, uh, you know, in the in like in September and then in August. I can't remember exactly when exactly, but he did two sessions. With, one with uh, LeJoy uh, on seats, and then another one he brought. Tom um, Gideon. Yeah, exactly. Uh, retired uh, from uh, from NASCAR, a wonderful man, and, and they really had you know a full session on safety. He shared with us all his knowledge. He's a wonderful man. I'm a big fan of HMS. Uh, really, when it comes down to safety, driver safety, they are the expert. And uh, and then no, this this time uh, they they wanted to do some product introduction, but we'll have Joe again. On the uh, on the one hour uh, uh, you know driver safety uh, uh, webinar because there's so much to learn from Joe and and from everyone at HMA. So great stuff, you guys! Thank you very much. Uh, again, that uh, uh, those products are on ePortrait as well. Go ePortrait.com, log in. We showed you how to do it many times. Click on one more information, ask a questions. Somebody at HMS will get back to you. And uh, so Jeff, thank you very much. Now, Going to Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Registering on Trade is easy. Fill out your name, email, phone number, and create a secure password. Next, select your business type. Choose supplier if you're looking to display products or services and connect with buyers. Choose racing business if you're looking to find new parts and connect with suppliers. Choose race team if you own or are a member of a professional racing team. Begin typing your company name. We most likely already have your company in our database, which you can select from the drop-down. Then, enter your job title. Choose claim company if you'll be editing your company profile. Other members of your company can choose join company if they'd like to use ePartrade as well. You can view and agree to our terms of use here. If you'd like to receive our weekly newsletter, choose Accept. Click Register Now and your registration will be submitted for approval. You'll need to confirm your email once it goes through. To keep our platform industry only, you'll be approved shortly after. If we require additional proof of business, we'll reach out. Welcome to ePartrade.